Hey, I'm Jack Rita with Future Pastimes, and I'm the designer of the Dune Ikaz Moritani expansion, Expansion 3 for the Dune board game. I have a freshly minted copy, and we're going to open it up and look at everything that's inside. So let's dive in and uh, take a look, and I'll tell you about the different uh, faction abilities as well as the three variants that are in this expansion. All right. I could have opened up the plastic, but I feel like it wouldn't be legit uh, if I didn't go through this process as well. This is a real unboxing. All right, we got that. Here's the box. It's a little bit thicker than the other expansions, and that's because there's a lot more going on in here. Here we go. So, got the rule book, 16 pages. It's got a little Karama cheat sheet here for the new factions, um, and then a lot of the... Uh, stuff on the leaders so you've got a handy reference for that and all the rules we have our packet of cards which will open we have five sheets of punch board including um the new homeworlds expansion this is the ecas faction homeworlds these are discovery tokens um moritani faction more homeworlds more discovery tokens more moritani Moritani and their terror tokens. And then of course we have the ambassadors for the ECAS. So take a look at those a little, more, a little bit more. All right, we're gonna start with the, uh, the shield. So the shield for House Moritani, that's Viscount Hundro, who's the leader of it. Your little strategy guide there, tips on how to play Moritani. And then we have Archduke Armand Ikaz, the head of House Ikaz. Strategy tips for that one. And then we have the faction sheet. So Ikaz uh, explains their at start information, all about their ambassadors, their Occupy advantage, which we'll talk a little bit about, Alliance advanced advantages. Um, Moritani got the terror tokens and what their effects are. And then they've got a couple other advantages. Enemy of my enemy, uh, Duke Vidal. You will notice that Duke Vidal shows up on the Moritani. He also shows up on the Ikaz. So this is a leader that both factions can get. So let's break him out so that we can uh, take a look at him. So Prad Vidal, as you can see, he is half Moritani, half Ikaz. So this is a guy who wanted to be the head of House Ikaz. Um, so he was in cahoots with the Moritani, spoiler alert, but uh, not a good guy. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at the cards. There's a pretty thick group of cards in here. Uh, if we can get into it. Uh, uh, cross your enemies, see them driven before you. All right, I'm making progress. I felt it tear, there we go. Okay, plastic clinging to me. Okay, so we've got the ECAS Alliance card, Mortani Alliance card. We have Bene Gesser predictions, of course, for ECAS Mortani. All right, and then our first thing is the Nexus card. So this is a new type of card, the Nexus card. These are available at the end of a Spice Blow and Nexus phase in which a Nexus occurred and at least one alliance occurs between the players. Anyone not in an alliance gets to draw a Nexus card. And there's one Nexus card for each faction in the game. Uh, and the way it works is uh, it has three effects and it's just depending on which faction you are and which factions are in the game. So if you draw the Atreides one, for example, and they are not in the game, you use the secret ally effect. And this is basically it gives you um, a one-time use of their battle prescience advantage. So you will have this card, but nobody will know what it is. And then when you choose to use it, you reveal it and play it and then discard it. Um, but if a lot, if the Atreides are in the game, can't use that, but you use the betrayal. And it's very similar to using a Karama card to cancel an effect. And again, it's a one shot. So they say, yeah, we're gonna use our prescience battle advantage. And you say, no, you're not. And then you discard it. And then of course, if you are Atreides, you wouldn't use either of those. You have the cunning effect. Now, whenever you draw your own, you can always immediately discard it and draw again. So you may not want that, but this is a pretty good one for Atreides. 
it basically lets them see a second element of the battle plan. So you'd be like, yeah, I want to see your weapon and you play this and I want to see your defense as well. So uh, kablam. So that's the Nexus card. So again, you use all of these. It doesn't matter which factions are in the game because any card can be played. It just depends. Uh, the effect depends on the factions that are in the game. All right. The next thing that we're going to take a look at are the discovery cards. So um, these are spice cards. They get shuffled into the spice deck normally, but when you draw one, uh, you're going to do more than just to have a spice bow. So they all have a spice bow. They're all six spice. Uh, it's the existing six spice locations on the map. Um, but you're going to get one of two different types of discovery tokens. And there's these tokens again on here. So these, for example, are smuggler tokens. So if you draw a card that has the smuggler token on it, you're going to put a smuggler token and it tells you what territory to put it. So um, in this example, it's gonna go on uh, false wall west. So the little token is there on the map to show you where to put it. So you would place one of the four smuggler ones face down. So nobody knows what it is. It has to be discovered. Um, but then when you, when you go there, at the end of the, um, after the battle phase, so if there's other factions in that territory, you will have to fight. Uh, but in the spice collection phase, whoever is left there gets to look at the token and they can reveal it immediately or choose not to reveal it at all. So these two, for instance, the smuggler ones, this one gives you a free treachery card. So if you have room in your hand, you reveal it, you get a free treachery card. This one, you're gonna get seven spice. Um, but the, the other ones, like we've got some Fremen ones. These will be in desert territories. These are all locations. So we've got, for instance, this is a shrine. So if you're there and you occupy the shrine, you can play a truth trance as a Karama card and vice versa. So you could use a Karama card to use for a truth trance effect. And this one is another stronghold. So it's Jakarudu Siege. And uh, it's got a special effect in there. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's a new stronghold that could show up mid-game. Um, so that's what these discovery cards do. They tell you where to put them and what type, but not which one specifically. And to balance it out, we do have another sandworm card, but it's a special one, it's the Great Maker. Um, so it acts like a normal sandworm in every purpose, except for in two ways. One is if the Fremen want to ride the worm, they're using their forces from their reserves. So they don't need to be in any specific territory. They just need to have some reserves and then they can ride those um, to any location. Uh, the other thing is that a nexus only occurs if there's a majority vote. So you're going to have all the factions vote on whether or not there should be a nexus. And uh, if more players do, then voila, you, you have that. Um, we do have three new treachery cards. So if you've got the treachery cards from the first expansion, this will now bring the total up to 50. Um, they are all special cards, but um, two of them actually get played in your battle plan. So let's start with the, um, the one that doesn't, and that is Recruits. So the way Recruits works is you play it during the Revival. It doubles the free Revival rates of all the factions. So the Fremen would actually go from three to six. Uh, Trades would go from two to four. Spacing Guild would go from one to two. Um, and then the normal Revival limit is increased to seven. So if the Tleilaxu are in the game, they can uh, increase it to five. This increases it to seven, and then you discard it. The other two cards are played in a battle plan in lieu of a weapon or defense. So we've got reinforcements. And the way that works is it's going to add two to your number dialed, and then you have to send three of your forces from your reserves to the Tleilaxu tanks. So it's a surprise plus two um, that the uh, other side maybe wasn't calculating. And then the other one ha we have is harass and withdraw. So when you reveal it, your undialed forces return to your reserves rather than being killed if you lose or whatever. Um, your leader can still be killed. Uh, you can still call traitor, which would cancel this, this effect. Uh, and then some extra information on here uh, regarding face, face dancers and home worlds. But it's a way to send some forces into a territory. Um, you're basically trying to get them to dial a lot of losses in order to win, whereas you're not going to lose any of them. So you could just dial zero and, um, and really hurt them that way. Um, next up, we've got... Um, trader cards so we've got the uh, ecas trader cards there are five of those 
five more Tane. There is not one for Duke Vidal. So if you remember our shady guy who can be in either faction, he's a six strength leader, no trader card. So uh, very good one to get. And um, the last thing that we have are the home world cards. So every faction is gonna have a home world token here that you put your reserves on. Um, and if you're playing with the home worlds variant, you're gonna also have a corresponding home world card. So this is the Caladan one. We've got, um, that is the Atreides home world. And um, each side of the card has a different effect and it's gonna depend on your reserve number. So um, you are at high threshold if you have between six and 20 of your Atreides forces on Caladan. And it gives you an extra ability here. It lets you know that when you win a battle, you may add one force from your reserves to the territory or home world where the battle occurred as long as you have at least one force there. So it's a free shipping of an extra guy uh, down onto uh, the board or onto another home world. And so, yes, uh, th just to give it away, you can attack other players' home world. So let's talk about that. If you dip down below this high threshold number, you're going to flip the card over. You lose this ability, so you no longer can do that. And you may have a handicap. So here, if the Atreides has from zero to five of their forces in their home world, um, they don't get to use their movement advantage. That is um, letting, getting to sneak peek the next spice blow. So that's called movement. Uh, and that because, that's because that's when you do it. Um, but every faction, when they're at low threshold, has plus one to their free revival and plus one on Chome Charity if they're collecting Chome Charity. So it's a little bit of a catch-up mechanism. So if you're at low threshold because you went for the win and you lost, and you've got a lot of guys in the tanks, now you can at least get one more out. And if you're also broke, you can get some more Chome Charity. But the bottom of this effect is called Occupy. So if somebody attacks Caladan and they win and they've got forces there, not only do I not have this advantage, and I do have this handicap if I'm Atreides, but now the occupier has an advantage, and is that they get to share my bidding advantage, which is Atreides gets to see each treachery card that comes up for auction, while the occupier also gets to see it. They're also going to get an income from the spice bank of two spice, so there's a lot of reasons to occupy someone else's planet. It also means if they want to get rid of the occupier and hopefully get back to high threshold they're going to have to fight you on there and the only way you can get your own forces back to your home world is in revival they automatically go there you have to revive more now there's one little other thing i will point out and it's it's on both sides everybody has home field advantage when they're fighting on their own home world even if they have no forces there um well if they have no forces there's no battle but let's say you have one force there um so the tradies are going to get a plus two to their battle um, and then there's a little extra note here. If you're thinking, oh, I'll just send one guy to Caladan and I'll do a laser gun shield explosion to wipe out all of their forces, um, there's actually a failsafe there. They only would lose two of their forces um, that were not dialed to a laser gun shield explosion. So the other thing is you can't, uh, you know, if, I, if I'm uh, an attacker on someone else's home world, I don't get to call traitor um, and I don't get to call face dancer from the Tlilaxu, um, but the natives there if the Atreides are fighting there in Caladan they can call traitor if the opposing player had it. so those are some of the nuance in the rules but we've got we've got one uh, planet here for every faction in the game we're up to 12 factions now and I will point out that um, the Emperor has two planets so they've got Kaitane and they also have Seleucus Secundus which is for their Sardaukar so if you're playing advanced you're probably basic you just use Kaitane you're playing advanced, you put the Sardaukar on Seleucia, and you've got a threshold there. Two to five of your Sardaukar, you're at high threshold. Um, and then if you dip down, you go to low threshold on the Sardaukar. A little point out, low threshold is also zero to two, so they don't they have to go to three Sardaukar to get back up to high threshold. So a little bit of a nuance there. The other nuance I will point out is for Chome. They have two pile as their home world. Um, their high threshold is actually a handicap, so they don't get to discard worthless cards for spice when they're at high threshold. They get an advantage for being at low threshold. So if they get involved, they get their forces into the game, then um, they get an advantage there. So um, that's home worlds. That's everything that's in this box. There's a lot of value in this box. It is packed with goodies. 
Um, I'm going to go into more detail on the factions and what they do in separate videos. Um, this is just kind of taking a look at what's in here. I've already said too much, um, but let me know in the comments uh, what you think so far and what you're looking forward to knowing more about. What do you think about this? Um, it's not available yet as the po as of the posting of this video, um, but it is available for pre-order. So go pre-order that thing, and um, I look forward to uh, seeing what people think of it. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.